here we are in Algeciras in the province of Cadiz. Okay, so if you look behind me, you can see the uh, Estranjeria, all right, the Estranjeria, which is the foreigner's office here where you can register your visa, your non-lucrative visa. A lot of people are just over the border from Malaga in Cadiz area, and this is where one of the places you can come to register your visa. You also get an IE number here as well if needed. A very small place. Now this place, our client actually said if you blink you miss it, and it's true. If you did, if you do blink you miss it. Uh, I had to stand on the opposite side of the road and go, where on earth is it? Um, so I'm going to do a little video just to show you where it is and take some photos. So for those of you who are coming to Algeciras to do your visa registration, the places like Soto Grande, for example, very popular areas are in Cadiz. Um, so check it out uh, this is where you can come to register your non-lucrative visa your golden visa whatever form of residency you are getting in Spain if it's a visa you can come and do your toma the way you're taking of the fingerprint here today we have been doing non-lucrative visa renewals um, very good system very old school office but they were quick they were in um, they didn't renew the photos now for us mm, always bring new photos when you're going for your NLV renewals albeit that we've seen a couple of times they can't be bothered to do the paperwork and the scanning and they don't want them especially if you look younger which was the comical comment they said today but you know it's always best to take the photos whatever happens so here we go the foreigners office in Algeciras Al Al as we say in Spanish you can see it's on the Avenida de Forjas Armadas, the huge main road going through. Um, but as I say, it's a very, 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 very small office. You can hardly tell it's here. The sign's hidden below the balcony. Uh, so I'm going to take a video now from the other side of the road just to show you exactly where it is. And that is another foreigner's office to add to the list that we've got of videos from around Spain. Let's run through to where to park. So, but well, this is called Las... Avenidas de las Fuerzas Armadas, the Avenida of the Armed Forces. Now, when you're coming from the uh, Malaga direction, mate, uh, you'll come along this road here. Google will bring you down this road as these cars are coming now, and you'll come to this crossing here. And you'll see there's a sign there for Plaza Alta Calle Afonso, Once. But take the right, because this is where Google stopped me. So around this area here, Google said stop it, it's on the right. But obviously I couldn't stop. So you carry on, and if you carry on going round, because then I went right, panicking, thinking, well, where on earth am I supposed to park? So you carry on going round to the right, you come to this road here, another dual carriageway. But immediately you'll see there's two parking places. Underground, as we say, always best advice. Go underground, you know, it's secure parking, and um, so you've got the Plaza Andalucia in front of you, and I just stuck mine here in one which is called Mendes Telosa. Okay, so Mendes Telosa parking. This also got a uh, lift access for people with wheelchairs. There you go, and the chemist next door. So if you come into Al Algeciras, Algeciras, as they call it here, you want to go to this parking place, and we'll show you now how to get to the, uh, to the station. Now just here still, and it was one o'clock. I hadn't had any breakfast, so I thought, right, come from menu the other year. Great thing in Spain. Now it seemed to have come back. Menu the other year seems to have come back. When I first arrived in Spain 23 years ago, uh, it was something that literally was a religion. Um, menu the other year for people who working in the daytime had their lunch. You'd go off, there'd always be a bottle of wine on the table. <laughs> Um, and gaseosa, this was up in Catalonia, they used to mix the wine and gaseosa and we used to get back to work. I think they've calmed down on the wine and gaseosa now on big day, but um, yeah, menu del dia, menu of the day is always something that's been typical. It seemed to tail off in the boom, so we had a very economic boom towards 2008 and then it all crashed obviously and then um, now it's come back with a vengeance. I think in some of the areas which are more 
um, of a higher density population. It's never been lost. Um, but yeah, here we are. So far, right, grab myself a menu down there, and the first um, little, uh, little bar of it. There we go. The only, the only one sat here for the moment because it's very early. It's one o'clock. I guarantee at three o'clock this will be even. And my first dish is a good old garlic soup. And basically, this is something that both me and my wife, Lara, we fell in love with when we first got to Spain. And you don't often see it that much now. It's basically soup made out of garlic. It has a little bit of ham on it. And they chuck fried bread and a fried egg on it. And it's absolutely amazing. Sopa de ajo. If you ever see sopa de ajo in a restaurant and you come to Spain, you have to try it. And it's, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it on a menu down there. Very old school bar this. So yeah, I'll let you know what comes out next. That's it. Soup gone and now we've got garlic chicken. There we go. Not the best looking garlic chicken I've ever had to be honest with you, but to be honest, the menu there will be at nine euros. You get a drink, two courses, a dessert, and I think they said coffee as well. So there you go. Well, we've left Algeciras now. I thought I'd do a little video like I normally do on the way home. Horrible to get out of Algeciras. We're currently on the, um, the A7, just going past the Strait of Gibraltar, in the Estrecho de Gibraltar, as they say in Spanish. Doesn't matter how long you learn Spanish for, if it's not your native tongue, Sometimes it's still hard to get your head around it. Um, even though you understand it um, and you can speak Spanish, and if, you've, if you learn it as an adult, it's always very, very difficult. You should never beat yourself up. I don't. I've been here 23 years. Uh, I get complimented on my Spanish quite a lot, which I'm very thankful for. But if I'm having a bad day and it's just not coming out how I expect it to come out. Just let it come out how it seems right. That's my own advice to anybody learning Spanish as an adult. Just don't worry too much. I honestly don't. Um, especially if you're tired as well. You know, it's not uh, it's not your native language. I, I think in Spanish sometimes. Um, Certainly when driving, the uh, thoughtful swear words in my head sometimes come out in Spanish, but don't, uh, which I never repeat, but, but yeah, you know, learning Spanish is tough, you shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself, um, you know, make it fun, the saying, up sticks, we give everybody a book, a blank book, just make that your journey, anything you see in there that you think's going to be good for you, just... Uh, just write it in there and learn it. Anything that's relevant to you. A huge heron's just, just flown past on the motorway. How amazing is that? So, yeah, what was uh, Alger Theatre? It's not, I mean, it's not really a holiday destination. You definitely wouldn't choose to go there on holiday, though you can if you want to go, if you are in the area, you want to go to Reef, as I said. Um, not to Reef, sorry. If you want to go to um, Morocco, you can go from Algeciras, Algeciras. So that's one of the difficult words. It doesn't seem to work with my mouth. And speaking Spanish, I struggle to say that in Spanish because it's got the G in the middle. But yeah, it's okay. You know, it's um, it's a very functional town. Um, everything is a port town, so. <clears throat> There's a lot of, um, should we say, labour, manual working jobs there, as you can imagine, um, being a port town, and you can see that reflected in the people walking around. 
i.e. they're walking around in high-vis jackets, you can see they've been at work, you know, for companies, maybe the boat companies, the shipping yard companies and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> big Moroccan community, I believe, because it's, um, oh, it's over the water from Morocco. Um, but on the other hand, great atmosphere, you know, walking around. Um, let's say it's a very functional sort of working town. Um, but like you see the menus there, the menu of the days are cheap. Um, no doubt a lot when you go to more touristy places, it's a lot more expensive. Though I say the quality is probably different as well, you know, a, a bog standard menu of the day for, I think in the end it was it was 10 euros for the menu and an extra beer. Uh, sin alcohol, by the way, sin alcohol, you just have to order sin alcohol if you're driving. Sin alcohol. Sin alcohol, as they say here, is without alcohol. And you can normally get that either in a little bottle or in a tap nowadays. So it's 11.50, which in pounds, what's that? Nine pound or something? For a three course meal with an extra drink, including coffee. So yeah, turned into a sunny day, but um, the, I mean the police station Al Jazeera is, is, is uh, really small, very, very happy police I have to say in there, apart from one of the people that turned into us, didn't really, didn't seem like she wanted to be there, but then I can imagine working in that environment every single day must be really tough, I was only there for 10 minutes and I had enough, well, 20 minutes, but they were very quick, it was very functional. Surprisingly, didn't want half the paperwork that we took with us, but then if you don't take it, they'll ask for it. Surprisingly, they didn't want the um, the photos, the new photos. Now, I would disagree with that because everywhere it says, yeah, if your photos are older than six months old, you have to bring new ones. Now, this is the second time I've come through a new one and I've said, no, people have spent money on photos, um, which they haven't needed, but we continue to tell people to bring new photos because the last thing you need to do is get to your appointment and the person behind the desk because it's basically down to them if they ask you for new photos or not sounds around and says I'm not giving you um, this until you get new photos So we'll soon be coming up to the Gibraltar exit. We don't forget we're on the A7 in the Malaga direction. So if you're coming from San Roque, this is how you'll be leaving. If you've had your appointment in Algeciras, if you've got a visa, on Luke 2 visa for example, it seems to be, oh, this guy's definitely gonna squeeze out, so off you go. This is the way you'll be going home. Always busy, never had a time when it's not been busy. Not that I come this way an awful lot. Generally from this way it's because we're going on holiday to Cadiz. There we go, just passing San Roque. San Roque being quite a popular destination for a lot of foreigners who live here. is now off to our right hand side, I can see it, sadly you can't see it here, but we'll come to the turn off soon. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've been in Gibraltar, but they tell me if you're planning a day out it's best just to walk across, park up and walk across, the queues can be horrendous now in and out. Evidently that doesn't work if you're doing your Christmas shopping. A lot of people from the Costa del Sol go to Morrison's for Christmas, go and get stocked up in the goodies. Um, on the coast, the Costa del Sol, we have uh, Iceland in Marbella and in Mijas, or Fingerola, it's on the Mijas Fingerola border on the A7, this very same road. 
you carried on this road took the coast version though, not the AP version uh, you would pass uh, the Mika's uh, thing, um, they call it overseas shop or something, it's Iceland basically has a lot of Marks and Spencer's products in there as well um, and there you go, there's only one sign to Gibraltar there you go, Gibraltar's there the 1107 on your right and they only ever have one sign yeah going back to Iceland uh, the shop that is in Mikas I think nowadays people aren't as bothered about getting the good old English things that they're missing from back home um, in terms of food you know now most of supermarkets like Mercadona would sell something equivalent to what you're looking for maybe not unless you're looking for ready meals they don't really do that many ready meals still here yet but apart from that if you get yeah, anything that you're trying to make Thank you.